If you were to tell me that we would see a 40 point game, two 30 point games, three 20 point games, four 12 plus point games, including two double doubles and a triple double in a single game, I would think we were watching a simulation of the 96 Bulls and the Super Team Warriors. But that's exactly what happened in game one of the Western Conference Finals. But because these two teams put on such offensive masterclasses, a question that comes to mind is which team has the best shot of replicating their game one performance in game two? So both of these teams definitely need to make adjustments. But a glaring weakness that I immediately noticed is the Lakers transition defense. More specifically, the lack of it. There was multiple occasions where the Nuggets would simply go straight to the cup in transition with no resistance. Take a look at this clip. Jokic passes to Aaron Gordon on the fast break. At this point, AD is nowhere near the paint and all perimeter help defenders are behind the play, pointing to where the ball is. Aaron Gordon sees the open space and takes it. Easy dunk. Here it is again. This time Bruce Brown has the ball. AD is once again out of the paint and the middle is wide open. Bruce Brown does a great read by driving right because he knows Austin Reeves can't help off MPJ in the corner and LeBron is more likely to help off Aaron Gordon. But the result is the same, easy and one lay. This final clip isn't necessarily transition, but it has a similar theme. Bruce Brown has the ball once again. To start, I'm not sure why Vando is full court pressing Bruce Brown and I think he's going to realize soon he shouldn't be doing that. AD is following Jokic and has no eyes on the ball. As Brown drives, the paint becomes more open, and I'll let y'all enjoy this slam. Well, you got the last name right. This dude Bruce Brown had Vandal grabbing Lonnie's nuts mid-air and had him doing a 2K injury animation after. Defensive lapses like these allowed the Nuggets to score six more fast break points than the Lakers, which was the margin of defeat. But the Lakers did make a very impressive adjustment to counter Nikola Jokic. The problem is, it took them too long to make that adjustment, but it is a positive looking forward. The Lakers put Rui on Jokic and matched AD up with the worst offensive threat on the floor, allowing him to be a Romer paint help defender. This picture sums it up perfectly. As you can see, Rui is guarding Jokic and AD is roaming the paint and not even paying attention to Jeff Green in the corner. This clip is a perfect example of AD deterring Jokic. Here's Jokic posting up Rui and as Jokic gets deeper, AD comes over to help and forces Jokic to pass. This Lakers adjustment limited Jokic to only 3 points in the entire 4th quarter, which was part of the reason the Lakers were able to make a run to come back in the game. Now both of these teams can make adjustments to counter each other, but at the end of the day, players have to perform, and repeatability is a major factor in series like these. So what team has a better shot of repeating this offensive masterclass? I would say the Nuggets. Although both teams have a past of inconsistent players, one team has a less inconsistent player. The Lakers major one is Anthony Davis and the Nuggets is Jamal Murray. In the series versus the Suns, Jamal Murray went off in game one for 34 and nine on 54% from the field and 60% from three. But in game two, he had 10 points on 20% from the field and a whopping 0 for 9 from 3. However, the rest of the series he was fairly consistent. But I can't say the same for AD. In the Memphis series, AD essentially alternated good and bad games throughout the series. Odd games being good, and even games being bad. For example, game 3 he had 31 and 17, but in game 4 he had 12 and 11. But anyways, overall both teams have their issues to fix and I'm sure each team will make the proper adjustments and we will just have to wait and see who executes better. But that's going to do it for this video so if you managed to make it this far, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated. And don't forget to comment down below your predictions for game 2. See y'all later, have a good day, peace.